Hello again everybody, this is a short video about musculoskeletal embryology. So here we are then, right back when you were a tiny embryo, when you're still a trilaminar germ disc, you haven't even rolled up into that kind of sausage form yet. And I'm drawing here the ectoderm and I'm adding some cells in just to give you an impression of the scale. So you can see just how tiny this embryo is. And then here is the mesoderm, which has started to organize itself as well. And then we better add on the notochord and that bottom layer, the endoderm. And then this is slightly later as we just get into the end of week three into week four and we're starting to curl around at this point. You can see that the neural groove has now formed a neural tube and there's the notochord just below it. And the paraxial mesoderm in week three starts to organise itself into those bead-like somites lined up along either side of the midline of the embryo. There's the intermediate mesoderm. You'll remember that's where things like the kidneys form and the lateral plate mesoderm that forms the lining of all your body cavities. We're not spending so much time on that in this video. There are the dorsal aorti. And then what we can see happening to that somite there is that it's dividing up. So the somite organizes itself into an outer derma myotome and an inner sclerotome. Let's add a bit of color. I always use blue for ectoderm. And then I'm just going to show that inner bit of the derma myotome in a kind of muscly red color. So now we're moving on even further and we'll see what's happening to all the divisions of that somite. I'll label up the neural tube and the notochord. Now the derma myotome has very much split into an outer dermatome and an inner myotome. And you can see the sclerotome, the cells of the sclerotome are starting to migrate and they're going to migrate around the notochord and the neural tube. And this is the beginning of the embryo starting to form its vertebral column. So now I'm going to try and draw what's happening in 3D. This is the notochord and these are the sclerotomes surrounding it. So you can see that they're still segmented just like the somites that they came from. And in the middle of each of these sclerotomes, we see something starting to form and that's the precursor of the intervertebral disc. So this looks really odd because it looks as though the intervertebral discs are going to end up in the middle of a segment. So this tells you something interesting about the vertebrae then. The vertebrae are going to form out of the mesenchyme of adjacent somites, adjacent sclerotome sections of those somites. So the caudal part of one somite is going to grow down, proliferate, these cells are proliferating and meets the cranial part of the next sclerotome down. So the vertebrae are intersegmental, they bridge between segments. And the notochord itself is obliterated by the developing bodies of those vertebrae, but still persists in the region of the intervertebral disc and contributes to the nucleus pulposus, that gel-like centre of the intervertebral disc. Then the part around the outside of that is the annulus fibrosus. So that's a quick overview of how your spine forms from those sclerotomes. Parts of those sclerotomes will contribute to other bones as well. Let's have a look now at what happens to the myotome. So this is going to provide you with your skeletal muscles. Here's the embryo at a slightly later stage where the shape of the vertebra is now visible. There's that myotome. It doesn't stay there as a single slab of muscle. First of all, it divides into two parts and we have a dorsal epimere and a ventral hyponere. And then those will proliferate further until we've got this kind of pattern. Now the epimere is forming the basis of the rectus spiny and the deeper transverse spinalis muscles. And then the hypomere forms the hypaxial muscles. And you could almost just leave it there, couldn't you, to form the muscles of the trunk. So the three layers of intercostal muscles and the three layers of anterolateral abdominal wall muscles. And that is really what happens. But in the limb region, things start to get a little bit more interesting because here the embryo is starting to push out, it develops limb buds and muscles from the hypomere are going to migrate into those limbs to form all of the muscles that we find in the limbs that we've covered over the musculoskeletal module. The mesenchyme is condensing in the centre of that limb bud, that's going to form the precursor of all the bones within that limb 
and you can see that we've got a dorsal muscle mass and a ventral muscle mass within that developing limb. The dorsal muscle mass is going to turn into the extensor muscles of the limb and the ventral muscle mass will turn into all of the flexor muscles of the limb. Let's add on the nerves. We've got the dorsal and ventral root of the spinal nerve and the spinal nerve just emerging there between one vertebra and the next and a dorsal primary ramus going to supply erector spinae and transverse spinalis. So this is exactly what we see in adult anatomy. The ventral primary ramus, well, in the thorax region, that's going to be the intercostal nerves. But a little higher and a little lower, we're going to find the limb plexuses. And this is how those limb plexuses start off in a very simple way with a posterior division from that nerve supplying the dorsal muscles in the limb and an anterior division supplying those ventral muscles. So whatever happens then to those limb muscles, and of course they become much more complicated, they split and fuse into different individual muscles, they will still remember that old pattern. So you'll still find that all of those extensor muscles are going to be supplied by posterior divisions of the limb plexus, whether that's the brachial plexus for the arm or the lumbosacral plexus for the leg. You'll find the same for the flexor muscles that develop out of that ventral muscle mass. They're always supplied by anterior divisions. Let's take a quick look at what these limbs look like on the outside, although I'm making them transparent so we can see the bones starting to condense inside. And to begin with those bones, I'm calling them bones, they look like developing bones. They are first of all condensations of mesenchyme, remember that is loose embryonic connective tissue, and then that will turn into cartilage. And then just as we get to week eight, we start to see the primary ossification centres appearing in those bones. What we can also see here by week eight is that the digits are starting to be separated and cell death occurs to carve out these digits and to separate them into obviously fingers in the upper limb and toes in the lower limb. And we're going to leave that little embryo just there with its primary ossification centres just starting to appear in the shafts of all of its long bones. So bones starting to form within those cartilage models. And then we get secondary ossification centres appearing at the ends of the bone in the epiphyses, separated by a cartilage growth plate, which stays there until the bone has reached its final adult length. But we're going to leave our little embryo there at just eight weeks of development with its bones just starting to form.